Welcome back to my channel. So, I love repainting dolls, but I'm also incredibly interested in doll lines and doll collections and just dolls in general. And sometimes a specific doll inspires me to do a repaint, which is what today's video is. One of the last collections that Monster High actually came out with before it was discontinued was the Ballerina Ghouls collection. And I've actually watched a couple of reviews on these dolls and a lot of people don't really like them, but I think they're so cute. Like they're so stinking cute. I'm also someone who's seemingly from the small minority of people who actually likes the Monster High reboot dolls. I think that the bodies are a lot better than the older versions and the softer face paint is kind of cute. To get to the point, I bought two of the Ballerina Ghouls dolls off of Amazon. I bought Dracula and I bought Monica Decay and we're going to be giving Monica a makeover today. For those of you guys who don't know, Monica is a zombie. She has darker gray skin than Gulia, and she looks quite a bit different than Gulia. They don't really look similar or anything, um, but they're both zombie ladies. I think she's like Dracula's enemy or something. I don't know if like Monster High goes that hard. I don't watch Monster High, but I really, really, really like the dolls. A bit of a con with these later reboot dolls is... Um, so the original Monster High dolls, their hands and their like arms are detachable. Uh, they come off, which I think is a good thing and a bad thing because a lot of the time when I go on eBay and I go to buy doll lots, a lot of them don't have hands, which leads me to believe that a lot of children probably lost their hands, which sucks. Like, I don't know, playing with a doll with no hands. Um, so I think that's why they made them not uh, detachable anymore, but it kind of looks bad because their joints are a little bit like weird and fat and they're stiff. Anyway, guys, let me stop rambling about this reboot and let's get into the repaint. I like Monica's lavender hair, but I do not like this green streak, so we are going to be sectioning her hair and cutting that chunk out. Taking this like pointy sculpting tool, I'm just pushing the plugs back into the head. Now to pop her head off. So you can use a blow dryer that you put on hot or you can use hot water. I'm using a blow dryer because I want to keep the hairstyle that she has. This next part is a favorite step of mine. I just love getting the factory paint off and seeing what canvas you're working with underneath. Taking Baby Unicorn from the Doll Planet, I'm plugging the area where the green hair was with pink hair because it was just a bit, I just wanted to go with a bit more of a pastel vibe because honestly, if I have the choice, I'm usually going to go with a bit more of a pastel vibe because I just freaking love pastels. With Fabri-Tac glue, I'm squeezing that around the hairline, the front of the hairline, just kind of feeling it out so that all that hair stays in place. Spraying the doll three times in Mystery Super Clear, we're finally onto the face-up. I always start with the eyes because I think that they're one of the most important parts of a face-up because that's automatically where your eyes go on a face. And I like to jump back and forth between them simultaneously. It helps me make them even and make sure that they're like as similar as I can get them to be. I 
I colored in her eyes with a mint green watercolor pencil as a bit of an ode to the original character design because it just really popped against the gray skin. I've never talked about why I wear a white glove while I do repaints. The reason why I wear a white glove is because Mr. Super Clear reacts really weird with oil and your skin has natural oils to it, so it's basically to protect the doll from my hands. I've tried to wear it on the hand that I draw with, a white glove, it, it just doesn't work out. It's real weird feeling, it feels real constrictive, and I just don't like it, so I just try not to touch the face. Taking purple pastels or shading around her face, I decided to use purple instead of gray because I just thought that gray would look a little bit too harsh and I wanted her to have a bit of a softer look. Now for the waterline. So we are taking a dark red watercolor pencil and I am outlining the waterline and also coloring it in in the inner portion and the outer portion, leaving the middle pretty bare of color. Let's talk about eyebrows. Eyebrows suck. Eyebrows are always hard, but lately I've been really into trying to perfect hair like pencil marks on dolls and my own personal eyebrows. I usually start with hair sticking straight up at the innermost part of the brow and then they slowly get more horizontal as they get to the Since this doll's skin is pretty dark gray, it may not appear that way on camera, but it, it, I mean, it really is. I'm using a black to outline her eyelid. With a dark green pencil, I'm beginning to make a gradient in her eyes. I'm starting at the top of her iris with dark green and then slowly going to fade to a lighter green. To make that gradient blend a little bit better, I'm going on top of the dark green watercolor pencil with dark green pastel. Now for veins, I love veins. So I'm adding veins to the forehead, the temples, the brow bone underneath the eyes, anywhere where I kind of notice where veins are on a face is where I am adding veins. Something I wanted to mention is if you guys are confused as to where to add veins or add shading or things like that, I really recommend looking at reference photos of faces. Also, you don't even need to look at like photographs or whatever, you can look at like painting because maybe it would be easier. For me personally, it's kind of easier for me to look at a painting that someone does um, because I feel like shading is a little bit more obvious in paintings as opposed to photographs. I'm just trying to say go study some faces. I think it'll be really useful to you if you're trying to get into doll repainting. Using a dark red watercolor pencil, I add lip wrinkles to the lips. I'm also placing highlights right next to those lip wrinkles to create a more three-dimensional effect with a light pink watercolor pencil. This kind of chunky pigment that I'm adding to the face is Macro Pearl from the Pearl X Pigments.
taking a q-tip i'm tapping some black pastel to the middle of the eye this is to create a pigmented yet blended look Lately I've been really into taking either metallic paint or metallic pigment and putting that in the middle of the pupil. I just like the way it looks. I recommend it. It looks kind of pretty. added some white lashes to the lashes. I've seen people do this before, like on Instagram, and I wanted to try it, and I hate the way it looks. I make the lips shiny with Vallejo Gloss. You guys have seen me prep doll bodies to blush like a million times, and I'm sure it gets a little bit repetitive, so I skipped that for this video, but I did blush the doll, and I basically used the same tones that I used on the face. The pink hair had to be curled in the same direction as the lavender hair, so I took some straws and bobby pins and I curled the hair around the straws and the bobby pins, and then I dipped the hair from hot water to cold water. I believe this method only works on nylon doll hair, so just keep that in mind. But I just dip it back and forth. I wanted to make her a purple turd, 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 tutu, tutu, but I didn't have any purple fabric. I do, however, have tons and tons and tons of rosy pink fabric and I figured that would go really well with her skin tone. To get the pattern for her tutu, I just took apart the dress that she came with and I kind of altered it a little bit. I didn't use the top part of the pattern because I wanted her top to be the top area of the dress to be a little bit different. So I actually took some tape and I believe it's called the tape method, <laughs> tape pattern method. I've seen a lot of people use it who do doll repaints, but I just wrapped tape around her top area um, to get a pattern and then I cut the tape off with an X-Acto blade and kind of figured out the pattern from there. It was really useful. I actually made this dress super fast. Like I've never made a dress this fast. It only took me two hours. It was like so fast. So I would call this, this dress or this ballerina tutu pattern or whatever pretty easy if you guys are new to sewing because I am, I don't know what I'm doing. But yeah, it only took me two hours. This is the end result and I'm really happy with it. It was like super easy to make. I ended up taking some, I think this is embroidery thread. I'm not sure. I totally stole this from my grandmom, so I don't really know what it is. But I took a uh, bead and I put it at the end of it. Just as like a little decorative fancy thing, you know? Totally not practical for ballerinas, but like it's cute. Now on to our accessories. So we're taking lavender acrylic paint and we're painting the shoes. These shoes are honestly like so cool. They have a spine detail on the back of them and I dry brush that with the white paint. They also have these like molded on pearl things that I painted with white paint as well. There's a little bow on the back of these shoes so I painted those pink and I also went on top of them with a rose gold watercolor paint that I have. And I took some, I have like this awesome like duochrome purple paint and I went on top of the lavender with that. Something I did off camera was I took a rose gold spray paint and I sprayed her tiara with it. And then I took some glossy varnish and I just went over her shoes and her tiara. Now to finally connect her head and her body and we're done. This is her, I love her. <laughs> I love ballerinas, I love this doll. I love that Monster High came out with like a ballerina doll before they discontinued them. I just think that the accessories are really cool and I love how she turned out. I really like the reboot dolls. What do you guys think of them? I like her color scheme a lot. Like, ugh, pastels and like muted rosy tones are just my jam, you guys, I swear. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about her. Uh, like this video if you like this video. Subscribe, it makes me happy. And I hope you guys are having a beautiful day. Bye.